Hey everyone, uh, Damien Tudvich here from the Into Deep Network once more, bringing a 3 vs 3 uh, Dawnable Soulstorm replay on the Elfros map. So yeah, as you can see it's the bottom right team, uh, uh, consisting of Goobka Bob as the uh, Dark Elder, interesting name, uh, Bloodshed Rain as the Sisters of Battle doing it with themselves, and of course Carbon Shooter as the uh, Dark Elder again. So this is the uh, top left team, uh, consisting of uh, Rus, Kapach, Adap, if that's what you say, but anyway, um, he's playing as the Imperial Guard. Uh, we Must Own is also playing as Imperial Guard, and Draco Revenge is playing as the Necrons. So let's just have a look at the uh, starting build. So it looks like um, Draco is actually putting a quick Gorse turret right next to the uh, Dark Elders, ba the Southern Dark Elders player's base. An interesting uh, thing to do. It might just end up paying off, especially if we can uh, finish that off. And yeah, we've got a pretty standard build order for the. Uh, Top left team, except actually we've got a pretty early Necron Lord coming out for the Necron player. Uh, as for the... We'll just call him... Actually, we can't really call him much, it's Kapachada, but... Oh, whatever. Um, we'll just call him the Northern uh, Imperial Guard player. So it looks like, yeah, they're, they're all going for pretty similar builds, or rather for pretty standard builds, shall I say. And yeah, it looks like Carbon Shooter is going for Warrior Squads to start off with, so pretty standard stuff there indeed. And yeah, it looks like the Battle Sisters player is not going for a Canoness or anything like that. So maybe they're looking to go for an earlier tier 2 perhaps. And there you go, it looks like the Ghost Tower has actually been completed for the Scarabs. And yeah, it looks like uh, Dark Hill player, the Southern Dark Hill player is going to know this. He's actually lost a, a Mandrake to that, it's not too bad actually, given that he could have um, sustained heavy losses. But yeah, now it's not going to get pretty bad for him. With the... Uh, Command squad coming out, and also some Imperial Guardsmen coming out as well, just to be a pain in the ass. So, so yeah, it looks like, uh, wow, it's interesting. Apparently, the turret can reach all the way to the listening post for Dark Elder player. Very interesting. It looks like, yeah, they're also going for Mandrake infiltration. Yeah, at the same time, on the north, not too much is happening, although, yeah, it looks like Harbin Shooter's not going to be able to capture that point. Because we've got the northern uh, Imperial Guard player trying to prevent that, but we also have a bit of a skirmish happening in the south, which looks like yeah, where most of the action is at the moment, so two squads of warriors, a couple of uh, sorts of squads out, and yeah, it looks like we've got the Necron Lord from the uh, top left team doing a bit of disruption as well, so not too shabby indeed, but yeah, he's going to have to teleport because just too many uh, ranged squads to disrupt there, and at the same time though, these Mandrakes might be able to kill off the command squad if uh, they're not careful actually. And uh, yeah, so it looks like yeah, the uh, bottom right team is being forced to retreat. Although, what do you know, we've actually got uh, damage. Wow. Your guard squad um, coming in from the north, but yeah, getting routed pretty quickly. And there we go, <laughs> there goes the uh, command squad, of course, as well. So, yeah, not too, too good indeed. And yeah, as for the. Uh, Necron player looks like yeah, he's just sending over a Necron squad, uh, Necron warrior squads over. And what do you know, they've actually, well, it's doing a pretty good job keeping his Necron lot alive. Ah, not too bad. Looks like a bit of focus fire managed to bring him down, so pretty good control by, I think, the Battle Sisters player on the bottom right. So, to shabby indeed, it looks like they're going to be making a bit of a push towards the middle, and I think, yeah, it looks like they might be seeing a bit of a push here, but it looks like they're going to get deflected again, so. Not too shabby indeed, looks like. Bottom is a place to be, so to speak. <laughs> oh, there we go. That was actually a heavy bolter turret that's being constructed. Right? I thought that building was a bit far out, and we actually got a second heavy bolter turret being created as well. So, for some reason, though, this um, the Russian actually I'll just call him the Russian Imperial Guard player. Uh, I'm assuming um, has not marked his troops that well because he's actually losing quite a few of them. So, I mean, guardsmen are pretty cheap, but if you lose the whole squad. You're going to pay pretty dearly to get a new squad up, so not too good at all. Let's just having a look, so... Not really too much happening in the bases themselves, but it looks like the, um... What am I team might be in a bit of trouble, actually. <laughs> so yeah, just getting attacked there, and... Wow, Necron Lord looks like he's been rebuilt already, so pretty quick. And yeah, he's going to be uh, doing a bit of disruption there, so... There we go, just get a... Nice little close shot of that. And yeah, it looks like 
the um, Dark Elder player, the Southern Dark Elder player, is actually a bit out of position, really. Although, no, wait, no, he's going to be pressing his, um, he's going to be pressing the uh, attack further into the Necron player's base, so he might actually be able to do quite a bit of damage before, um, well, before anything actually even reaches as well, but then again, we do have the summoning core up for the Necron player, so that means, yep, they can transport their Necron squads just like that, although it looks like they might not get torn up by these uh, melee squads for the uh, Dark Elder player, so... <laughs> to show me then at the same time though, got a bit of an engagement happening here, and pretty good use of the... Um, I don't remember what kind of grenades they're called. The battle sisters get some sort of flaming grenades. <laughs> flaming grenades, not that. I have to look that up actually. And yeah, I've actually got quite a few uh, warrior squads actually being built by the uh, northern Dark Elder players. That's really interesting. I, su I suppose it would complement um, the melee troops being deployed by the southern Dark Elder squad, of course, if they were in closer proximity. Which uh, looks like, yeah, they might be actually. At the same time, yeah, we do have a homoculus laboratory and a slave chamber being built, so it looks like maybe they're gearing to move up to tier 2. Oh, maybe they're. Actually, no, they wouldn't be because. Um, that's basically the armory building for them, so yeah. Apologies, well, so they're actually going for poison blades instead. Deciding just to go with uh, general tier 1 upgrades. Stay in tier 1 a bit longer before going to tier 2. Will it pay off? Probably. Probably. Just have to see what happens. Yeah, it looks like the Necron Lord is about to get killed. Well, I mean, they thought he actually teleported, but no, he didn't actually. And yeah, right at the moment, though, the bottom right team is actually trapped a bit in the base of the uh, ne Necron player, but we're seeing a pretty good breakout. Of these, uh, wow, the break, break out indeed of, by the uh, southern, whoops, by the uh, southern uh, Dark Elder player. So. Yeah, it looks like he's decided to go back into the fray there after doing a bit of disruption to these uh, guardsmen, and, uh, and I suppose to the to a lesser extent the command squad as well. See, so yeah, apparently the Russian uh, Imperial Guard player is saying something, I'm not entirely sure what though. That's what though. Also, looks like he's restoring, um, oh, no, that's, that's ripping off the stone. Yeah, restoring his. Uh, Morale of his squad, and what do you know? I've actually got power plants going down for the Necron player. His infrastructure is actually getting torn up pretty badly, and if this keeps going on, I'm surprised that these. Ah, oh, there we go. Finally, the Imperial Guardsmen are being sent to do a bit of damage. Yeah, but fortunately, though, it looks like the bottom right team doesn't have any sort of anti vehicle or anti building units to use. <laughs> not bad. Uh, to use against this um, HQ. So the HQ will most likely stay alive, but yeah, as you can see, the. Uh, other buildings have pretty much been destroyed, but thankfully they have managed to keep up the, the Forbidden Archives and the Summoning Core as well, so... Provided, provided that the uh, bottom right team can actually be driven away from the uh, Necro player's base, which doesn't appear to be the case for the moment. Um, top left team might be able to recover, but... Well, actually seems some, some pretty good uh, mixture of troops here. wonder if the uh, bottom right players maybe play with uh, each other for different games or something like that. That right, so so. And yeah, unfortunately, it looks like the Summoner Core will be going down, so it looks like that'll just be leaving the Forbidden Arca, which is kind of funny. Uh, what do you know? Necron Lord managing to get in the, get on in the action, cast the uh, Solar Flare ability, just in the nick of time. But um, yeah, all the warriors have to do, of course, is just to redeploy, and yeah, they should be able to take down the Summoning Core pretty easily. Although maybe not, because they're running straight into the uh, grenade launches of the um, Pure Guardsmen. Seems some pretty good use of the. Um, Dark Elder Soul Abilities. <laughs> it's managing to actually uh, demoralize all these guards, but it's not a shabby indeed. Oh, actually, they might have just thrown in their Terrafix grenades using the uh, Warrior Squads as well. But they did seem to simultaneously um, break morale though. Well, hard to tell. In either case, pretty good use of the uh, Dark Elder Abilities. Well, not bad. Pretty good use of the uh, Sacred Abilities as well for the Command Squad. And yeah, at the same time though, it looks like. Um, yeah, for a bit of archive and Summoning Core is still alive somehow. And uh, yeah, it looks like Dark Elder, what they've basically been doing is just keeping these uh, Imperial Guards troops at bay while uh, everybody else at the well from the bottom right team was basically slowly tearing up the uh, Necron players' base. So it looks like they're actually trying to capture a point. Not really the best thing to do when there's buildings that um, you might be better off uh, destroying instead. So yeah, quite a bit of action happening just, just about from the get-go really. I thought the uh, top left team might have actually had the uh, bottom right team on a bit of uh, a downward slope with that initial uh, Gorse turret, but yeah, it's like as if a Gorse turret is uh, indestructible, so defeated with relative ease. And yeah, it looks like these uh, battle sisters are finally 
might be destroying one of these buildings. Maybe? Uh, not quite. No, apparently not. Oh, well. And yeah, the rest of the bottom right team is being forced to retreat. So these battle sisters, they might want to retreat as well, actually. I mean, they've got a hellhound chasing them around. And what do they have here? Demonic corruption. So here yeah, looks like yeah, the uh, Dark Elder player, the southern one at the very least, is actually a tier 2 at the moment. He's decided to go with Scourges of all things. And yeah, he's upgraded his save chamber as well to use the uh, Soul Powers as well. And just having a look, yep, looks like the Battle Sisters player is at tier 2 as well. And as for the northern Dark Elder player, I'm guessing they're probably at tier 2. It's hard to tell though. I mean, they just uh, went for... Wow, that's a crap load of warriors, actually. And yeah, as you can see, the um, bottom of my team has been driven down, so while they're being pursued, we might just see what's happening at the other base. So yeah, it looks like we're at tier 2 for the uh, two Imperial Guard players, yep. And it looks like the Necron player, I think, is still at we're tier 1, uh, due to the fact that most of their base was destroyed. And what do you know, maybe the same thing might happen to the uh, Dark Elder player in the uh, bottom part of the uh, map here. Although, maybe not so, if you can hold off that initial assault. And, wow, that was a massive... Uh, it's too bad I missed that, because it looks like, looks like as if we just had a um, bit of a massacre of troops here. Not too shabby indeed. Yeah, finally with the scourges being deployed. It looks like they've been outfitted with anti-vehicle weaponry. Yep, so yeah, they'll certainly uh, be able to tear up that hellhound with relative ease. But at the same time, though, we do have <laughs> Imperial Guardsmen actually being used in melee, which is something I don't see every day. Bit of a desperation move, really. And yeah, it looks like the Hellhound is actually being driven straight into the um, Battle Sisters base, probably to get a quick scout off, but um, really, uh, it's... I wouldn't say that there was a need to do that, I and mean, they could have saved the um, Hellhound relatively easily. It's not as if um, they could have seen too much unexpected stuff in the uh, Battle Sisters base. So yeah, it looks like we finally have the bottom right team regrouping. Top left team is on the run. It looks like they're going to be making another stand on the at the um, Necron player's base, from what I can tell. But, hold the phone. Looks like the... Uh, not really seeing the best um, heavy weapons upgrades for these uh, Imperial Guardsmen, actually. They're being upgraded with plasma guns, and they're pretty good against heavy troops and such. But the problem is they do have pretty uh, limited range, so they can actually get outranged by the uh, Scourges. And, of course, Scourges can jump around and uh, do all sorts of nasty ranged damage, while these Guardsmen basically... Ah, uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, we did have a soul. But anyway, while these Guardsmen are basically um, demoralized. So yeah, pretty good use of the Guardsmen by putting them into melee against these Scourges, and actually being able to force them back. So yeah, it looks like um, Goop Cup Bob was actually getting a little bit too cocky. So we've gone for Soul Seeker Ammunition Research, so yeah, it looks like he will certainly be staying, uh, or at the very least he might be transitioning to a bit more of a, a ranged uh, approach. Although there's nothing to stop him from creating more uh, melee troops as well, but actually if we look carefully, we, there's no um, melee troops from him on the uh, ground at all, so even his command squad has been eventually killed. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like um, quite a bit of the top left team has also been killed off as well, at least when it comes to troop numbers. So yeah, it's just, we had a, before we had a horde of troops here, it was just a horde of uh, scarabs, which don't really do so much. And a couple of guards have been coming in, so I'd say... Probably should be going for the summon core, there we go, yep. Okay, never mind. But let's just, we'll just go for the obelisk instead. And yeah, it looks like the top left team is going to be in quite a bit of trouble, though. Don't know what uh, they can do about the... Uh, dark, uh, like at the uh, Necron player's base. Looks like they're sending a Builder Scarab up, just wondering... Oh, okay, they do have a bit of artillery. But of course, without any follow-through, artillery can only do so much. Yeah, got one of the players asking for a uh, power resource. And one left about to go down, so we're seeing quite a bit of damage being inflicted upon it, but we do actually have a pure Guardsman assisted with a... Um, wow. <laughs> Assisted by a uh, priest getting torn up by the um, uh, Sisters of Battle ability, the. Um, I can't remember what's that, what that actually is called. Yeah. In any case, it comes, yeah, it's used by the Confessor. I think it's called Holy Smite or something like that. And yeah, the, the uh, Necron player has actually been entirely defeated, so they didn't even have a chance to put up a, um, a new monolith or anything like that. So it looks like, yeah, rather than pursuing the. Um, Top right team through the uh, choke point here. Looks like yeah, they're going to be going for the a uh, bit more of a frontal approach to the um, pure guards base instead. So don't know if I'd entirely agree with that. But then again, when you have an army advantage, uh, funneling your army for a choke point is not really the uh, best thing to do sometimes. So yeah, it looks like Goop has actually gone 
for a witch cult arena. So we'll probably be seeing some witches and such coming out uh, shortly for him. And who knows, maybe even a resurgent, resurgence of his uh, command units. One can only hope, though. Yeah, so these scourges are slowly torn apart. Slowly getting torn apart, I should say. I'd say um, he probably should have sent some melee troops or something in the before them, before the scourges arrive. But yeah, in the case, that's what he wants to do. That's what he wants to do. So he's actually um, running the scourges around a little bit and bunching them up a little bit here, which is um, not too good. But then again, he should be able to take out at least one bus this. Or maybe not. Actually, he's going to get killed pretty quickly. So yeah, pretty good. Um, Placement of the uh, heavy weapons team and the uh, listing post and such by the uh, pure guard players, so being able to completely annihilate the um, the army of the uh, seven dark elder player. And yeah, it looks like he's actually going for tier three at the moment. And as the northern one doesn't doesn't seem to be doing too much, so it's either in tier two or tier three. It might still be in tier one actually. If he, all he has is just warrior squads. But yeah, you never know. So we'll just have a look see what else is going on. Not too much, although we do have a bit of an incursion. Got a couple of Celestial squads. We're going to be outfitted with... Uh, it's interesting, one of them's going to be outfitted completely with anti-vehicle weaponry. Although the other one is uh, we're going to have a couple of anti-vehicle weaponry. Uh, or rather a couple of their... Uh, bolt guns upgraded to... Uh, well, should I say? Bolters upgraded to... Uh, melter guns. So it's interesting that they actually decided to upgrade one melter gun and one multi-melter. Because normally... If you're only going to up partially upgrade your um, soldiers, that there we go, pretty good use of the uh, smart ability, or whatever you call it from the uh, confess there. But yeah, if you're going to be upgrading them just, you know, in a bit of a half assed fashion, you might as well upgrade them with the uh, best anti vehicle weaponry first. Because not really much point in uh, yeah, doing it otherwise, really. And yeah, we've got a pretty good stun ability being used by the confessor as well. Not too shabby indeed, so yeah. Also th have the um, salt power being used by the, uh, presuming maybe the Southern or the Northern Dark Elder player. I'm not entirely sure which one. So basically, yeah, it does a bit of damage and stops the um, particular troop from using the special ability. So the priest in this case won't be able to use the fanaticism ability. So pretty valuable to use um, on those circumstances. Yeah, they're the capping the. Uh, points that were previously captured by the bottom right team. So yeah, it looks like the bottom right team has retreated to. Uh, I supposed to regroup, and yeah, there we go, finally got here to being researched for the Dark Elder player. They just decided to go with cramp loads of slave chambers for some reason. Maybe they're going to go for loads of soul powers. As far as I know, though, you can't really trade soul energy or whatever you call it um, between Dark Elder players, which well, I suppose is probably for balancing reasons. And there we go, it looks like we've got some upgrade for the uh, retinue of the Archon, and we've got War Beasts coming out as well, so they'll certainly come in pretty handy along with the uh, witch squad as well, so hopefully he's going to be building that uh, squad as well. Well, I'll have to see what happens, I guess. But yeah, it looks like in the meantime, though, top left uh, team has slowly regrouped their troops. And yeah, they're going to be making a bit of a push, but... And what do you know, they've actually got a Mars Patton command, and yeah, they do have a uh, relic as well, so we might actually see a Bane Blade coming in. Will they actually be able to save the day? Probably not, but... Make for one hell of a last battle in either case. And yeah, given that we've got several minutes left, yeah, we'll probably be seeing this game drawing to a close slowly. Yeah, I'm just having a look actually. It looks like not, not many of these players have actually gone for uh, vehicle plants in general, so only the Battle Sister squad here has gone for uh, Manifactorum and yeah, just getting some general upgrades and such. Oh, there we go, got a Dark Foundry for the Northern Dark Elder player and a Witch Cloud Terrain as well, so they're just playing a bit of a game of catch up. And yeah, they'd want to be sending their uh, the, what their uh, warriors for. I'm not quite sure why they're not, but um, there you go. So yeah, I've actually got a bit of an engagement by <coughs> the Sisters player and the Southern. Actually, no, this. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, the Southern uh, Dark Order players just starting to walk straight into heavy fire. And yeah, they're not going to be doing too well. The Sisters, on the other hand, they might actually do pretty well, given that they managed to put out a uh, living saint actually. Shabby indeed, at the same time, yeah, they do have a uh, canonist out. Unfortunately, looks like as if her retinue of uh, Celestians has been uh, taken out, it's rather unfortunate. So. And finally, we have the um, warriors being released for the uh, northern. Uh, <coughs> sorry, for the uh, northern Dark Elder place. So, 
be able to come in that just in time. So I don't know if that was uh, intentional or not, and I don't know how much damage they'll actually be able to do. I've actually got pretty massive amounts of uh, artillery coming in from the north. Just having a look. So we've got one, two, three, four basilisks firing on the uh, wow, <laughs> on the troops in the south. So pretty heavy fire indeed. Check with the basilisks. I think the maximum number you can have on the field is either two or three. I'm not entirely sure. I think it's three though. Oh yeah, because we've actually got three basilisks for one player. I suppose it could be four now that I think of it. <laughs> In any case, yeah, certainly no shortage of artillery, which means that the uh, bottom right team will probably be do do much better in sending a whole bunch of melee troops forward, so at the very least the artillery targets their own uh, troops instead. And yeah, we finally got the heavy weapons teams being deployed as well. We certainly, uh, bottom right team, we certainly want to take them out as quickly as possible. And yep, down they go. So War Beast is being used to take out one. And yep, Living Saint actually taking another one. And a third being taken out, strange enough, by the um, Smite ability. And yep, he gets killed as well. So, yeah, the Living Saint certainly hitting uh, pretty badly for the top left team, actually. Oh, I thought it might have been a super unit for a second there, but that's just a tech priest at the bottom left there. Looks like it's about to die. I'm pretty sure it has um, that resurrection ability uh, fully charged up, though. so yep, there we go. Good as new, I'd say. <laughs> so yeah, coming back to life there, and yeah, we've got more heavy weapons teams being deployed. And even a heavy bolter turret being set up, actually. So it looks like as if the um, top right team is actually setting up a bit of a kill zone in the middle here, using the uh, well, various troops as uh, bait, and yeah, of course, just putting these uh, heavy weapons teams in the background just to do severe amounts of damage, and that might actually work. Actually, the uh, top left team is slowly being whittled, not really seeing too many um, troops or anything reinforcing. Although they're yeah, starting, finally starting to do a bit of damage behind enemy lines, though. This uh, American squad being able to kill. Heavy weapons team and a basilisk might just go down as well unless if he decides to move it away, but um doesn't look like it's going to happen though. And yeah, I think the um oh, never mind, Living Saints is still alive actually, although yeah, it looks like it's going to get killed pretty quickly as well. And we've actually got a Soulstorm ability being used directly on top of the uh, basilisks, so a very unconventional use of the uh, Soulstorm ability to say like least. Because as you can see, it doesn't do that much damage against vehicles. You really want to be using it against uh, hordes of troops and such. <laughs> and there you go, nice shot by the basilisks. They're just um, blowing those uh, squads of uh, well, that squad of uh, incubi in the uh, leading arc. Uh, not bad. And interestingly enough, the uh, battle sisters player has quit. So has the seven dark elder player. And I'm assuming the northern player is going to quit as well. So that was very, very strange. Decision to say the least. I mean, bottom right team, sure, they, their armies were defeated and all that, but come on, they had three bases to two bases uh, compared to the top left team, and yet they quit. That's. I don't know. I suppose it might have been a bit of an accident, or maybe the Battle players decided to uh, quit prematurely, so yeah. hard to tell, really. But in the case, yeah, I'm going to be seeing, funnily enough, a uh, last stand. For the bottom right team, so I didn't quite expect that. So. And there you go, actually setting up the heavy weapons teams right next to the uh, listening post, actually. Something going on more miss So they yeah, should be able to take it out. Quick, smart, and yep, down it goes. See, heavy weapons teams, yeah, they're pretty good to use in general. But of course, usually you'd want to put them a bit uh, further away than that. So, yeah, pretty good uh, use of the troops by the top left team. And yeah, they had a Bane Blade out as well, so. I think it's a bit uh, harder as well. So yeah, yeah, uploading this video hopefully later on tonight as well. And until that happens, this has been Damien Vidovich signing off.